Psalm, chapter 55. For the choir director, a psalm of David to be accompanied by stringed instruments. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my cry for help. Please listen and answer me. For I am overwhelmed by my troubles. My enemies shout at me, making loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. My heart pounds in my chest. The terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me, and I can't stop shaking. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I would fly away and rest. I would fly far away to the quiet of the wilderness. How quickly I would escape, far from this wild storm of hatred. Confuse them, Lord, and frustrate their plans, for I see violence and conflict in the city. Its walls are patrolled day and night against invaders, but the real danger is wickedness within the city. Everything is falling apart. Threats and cheating are rampant in the streets. It is not an enemy who taunts me. I could bear that. It is not my foes who so arrogantly insult me. I could have hidden from them. Instead, it is you, my equal, my companion and close friend. What good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together to the house of God. Let death stalk my enemies. Let the grave swallow them alive, for evil makes its home within them. But I will call on God, and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon, and night I cry out in my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. He ransoms me and keeps me safe from the battle waged against me, though many still oppose me. God, who has ruled forever, will hear me and humble them. For my enemies refuse to change their ways. They do not fear God. As for my companion, he betrayed his friends. He broke his promises. His words are as smooth as butter, but in his heart is war. His words are as soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. But you, O God, will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars will die young, but I am trusting you to save me. Hey guys, I want to welcome you to our study of the book of Psalms, uh, where our main uh, hope is that this would give you uh, just a, a way for you to be able to have an open relationship with God, uh, to find out, especially the book of Psalms, um, you get to find out that it allows you uh, to, be, to be able to explore even emotions that, um, that, that, that usually we don't think are, are, are appropriate to approach God with. And so um, we usually begin uh, with going through... Um, uh, going through what the church father, uh, Athanasius, says. Uh, but before we do that, my name is Raphael. Gaspar. <laughs> yes. And so we're looking at Psalm 55, and this is what Athanasius says. And if you are enemies who oppress you, insult you, and those who seem to be your friends discredit you uh, by making a fool of you, and you get perplexed by their subtlety, um, for a little while, nevertheless, you should be comforted by singing to the Lord and reciting the words of Psalm 55. And so here's the main idea of this psalm. Uh, the psalmist laments, uh, laments his betrayal by an intimate friend, uh, and he expresses confidence uh, in God that he will be delivered by him. So um, let me just give you an outline of, uh, of some Psalm 55, from verse 1 to verse 8, we see David's anguish, uh, where he is under siege in verse 1 to 3, um, and then he is under deep sorrow in verse 4 to 8, um, and then we see him now really express his anger in verse 9 to 15, uh, where he is asking God to confuse the wicked, verse 9 to 11, and then to confound uh, this traitor that uh, he thinks he's a really good friend, and then he asks God to condemn the wicked. And then you see assurance finally flooding his soul in verse 16 to 23, 
where he, he, he is so sure that God saves, that God hears, he ransom, uh, ransoms, and then he afflicts, he sustains, and then he destroys as well. So um, so that's Psalm 55. Gus, uh, what, what are some of the things that stood out for you in this psalm? Uh, well, first of all, the amount of pain, emotional pain that mm. the psalmist is going through um, really highlights the the damage that can be done from somebody inside your gates as opposed to somebody yeah. you know, outside. You know, how much more can those who we know, who are our friends, who are our family, how much they can hurt us compared to those who we expect, mm -hmm. you know, you would expect a, an enemy, we would expect uh, somebody we didn't know to hurt us, but so we're almost bracing for that. But yeah. those almost with inside our gates, how much more vulnerable we are to them and how much more damage, how much more hurt um, that we often experience from yeah. from those that we hold closest. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's that's now very... Because here David is using... He says this person is very, very close to him. Um, he says that uh, this person was very close to him where he says, my friend acts violence, violently against me, in verse 20, against uh, those at peace with him. He violates his covenant. Um, so this friend broke even a covenant with him. Uh, not only that, in verse, uh, uh, you get to see in verse 13, it says, but it is you, a man who is my peer, a companion and a good friend who used to have, who, who used to have close fellowship and we walked in the crowd into the house of God. So they used to fellowship together and all that. But then this is the very person that now has wounded him very deeply. Um, and they, there's a way in which uh, in relationships, folks, so for example, whether it's uh, in marriage, whether it's, uh, it's in family, we can be wounded very deep. Uh, and here in this psalm, we get to see uh, the first option that David has is uh, is maybe let me escape, mm -hmm. let me escape, and let me just let me let me disappear. Because in verse in verse six, he actually says this: "I said, if only I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and find rest." And so, um, and then he says, "How far away?" I would flee and I would stay in the wilderness. So we see here David very, he's saying, man, I wish I could just disappear. I wish I could just withdraw. That's one of his, uh, one of his, his he's tempted to just withdraw, um, just like a lot of us would uh, be tempted to escape. And usually today we find people usually try to repress their, what they feel, uh, try to, to maybe... Uh, numb it out, trying to take sleeping pills and withdraw and just do all those things, um, or even alcohol or yeah. whatever. And then this always ends up in, in even in, in abuse or a substance abuse. And people just try to block out how they feel, but it always returns in a dangerous way uh, to, to haunt us, especially when we don't have a way to, to express that. Um, so... Why is it well? Why is it important for David not to just repress this? <laughs> yeah, um, because if you don't deal with with your emotions, if you don't deal with if you don't deal with something, essentially it's going to deal with you <laughs> eventually. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's what they. You can't only suppress something for so long before it starts coming out other places, and. Um, so by by finding an outlet for it somewhere, um, you you're 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 dealing with it. You're expressing it, um, mm -hmm. and it's important to do that because, like I said, if you don't deal with it, it's going to deal with you eventually. Um, it's going to start affecting other areas that you may not have intended. Yeah, um, and that's why we 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 see how you know. Issue, unresolved issues in the past, they, they affect your current relationships. And you may not realize that 
you, you may do something and you don't realize why you're doing it, but it's it's because some issue that has come up from the past. Yeah. So how, how does David deal with this? <laughs> like, um, yeah. He because like option one is to opt out and yeah. just get yeah. get withdraw and do all that, but David doesn't do that. Yeah. Well, what does he do in this? Yeah, the what I find impressive about this psalm uh, is the amount of honesty, like brutal, blunt honesty that he's expressing towards God. Mm -hmm. um, and he even admits, like, you know, I want to run away. Yeah. You know, I want to escape and not even not only just escape for a little while, um, he he says, uh, I would stay in the wilderness. You know, I I want to get out of here and not come back. Mm -hmm. Because of the the circumstances, um, but then he continues. You know, he's you know, he's honest about his desires, about his heart towards God. Yeah. Um, and you know, the song continues. Yeah. Um, so even though that's what he wants to do, he's he's saying, and he's opening his heart towards God and being brutally honest. Um, using some a lot of language that I think many of us would would hesitate to use towards God. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting to see how how basically he uses prayer as a way. Like so, instead of just opting out, he then has he you know he has been betrayed by the one that like with. By this person that he has trusted deeply, mm -hmm. um, but then he finds himself like going to God, and he prays, and it, it's almost as if like he is saying, "Man, like no one else can, like there's no one else to trust here, but I know that God, you are trustworthy, mm -hmm. and and you are trustworthy because you understand how." Like what I'm going through, and and for us, especially as Christians, um, really having to to study what Christ went through. Uh, as I was reading this psalm, and I was like, man, I could see what is going through Jesus, what is going through Jesus' mind um, right when he's praying and he's sweating blood, uh, which is the highest form of, of stress, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, when he knows that his best friend, uh, he one of his friends, like, I mean, Jesus, there was a million people, there was a lot of people in Jerusalem, but he chooses 12, mm -hmm. and one of those goes and betrays him. Yeah. And and so as he's praying there, uh, this just kind of helped me to see, like, what, what kind of, like, what kind of savior we have, mm -hmm. who understands, like, what you say, your favorite, uh, your favorite verse is uh, is in Hebrews chapter four that that he he sympathizes with our weaknesses. He understands what we so what we go through. So therefore, he's trustworthy um, to actually hear. Yeah. And what's so beautiful about David here is that he he goes to God and he just like you say, um, I think it's in verse nine, fifteen. Uh, 19 and 23, you get to see just raw emotion where he goes to God and he believes God can be able to a, a handle uh, his just what he really, really is blunt honesty, um, which is actually prayer, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> true prayer. Yeah. yeah. True prayer is literally like when. Um, I like what Paul Miller said in his book, The Praying Life, when the true me meets the true God. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like, this is me. This is me, raw and just, and wounded. And this is what we get to see here. And we see David coming and he's overwhelmed. Um, one theologian said, this is a classic case of anxiety where he's just really having a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. But he at least is able, instead of actually likes escaping is able to actually open up to God. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. That's and how um, how this I love how this this psalm um, really breaks down 
and offers somebody who, like even who somebody who's been abused, how it offers them uh, a voice yeah. to, to mm -hmm. the pain that they may be feeling, and they they just don't know how to say it. Um, you know, the one of the most hurtful things about abuse is is the betrayal. Yeah, you know, eighty percent of abuse is had is caused by somebody they know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somebody who is supposed to care for them, you know, somebody within their gates, so to speak, has has caused this hurt and mm -hmm. how that silences their voice. And what does David say? God, listen to my prayer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, his heart shudders within him. You know, when your heart is palpitating, you feel like you have no strength, and yeah. you, know, you fear you have no power in the situation. And um, he's, and but you know, that's another thing. People in abusive relationships, they feel like they don't have power. They mm -hmm. can't. They can't change the circumstances. Um, and you know, so he's calling out to God, and is for. For justice in the situation, um, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 one of those things where at least you get to see uh, just so there is this openness with with the negative emotions that are going on, but then there is this like assurance that he has where he says, in verse sixteen, but I call to God, and the Lord will save me, and I complain and groan morning, noon, and night, and he hears my voice. You, you get to see just definition of what prayer really is here. Mm -hmm. You know, complaining, groaning, and then not only that, you get to see, though many are against me, he will redeem me from my battle mm -hmm. unharmed. And so you get to see just this thing of like where he goes, um, there's this, let's, he opens up, with his feelings of anger, but he also really has this thing of like, where he knows that God is going to be able to save him. Um, and, and, and so he emerges out of that, um, he emerges out of that where he says in verse 22, cast your burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken. Um, and God will bring them down to the pit of destruction. Men of bloodshed, treachery, uh, will not will not live out there uh, half their days. But I will trust in you. Mm -hmm. um, there's this there's this comfort that comes to him when he has like come like that whole word cast. It's almost like just pick them up, hurl them towards God. Mm -hmm. uh, don't carry this burden. And here David just shows us that, like, man, by casting in prayer, we are open up in the raw emotion. Mm -hmm. we, we, we are sure that he's going to do something about it. Um, but there's this, just this, this comfort that ends up coming to him. Uh, well, what is the comfort that we find in prayer? Um, well, I think uh, what's, what's awesome about about what God does for us is by knowing the outcome, mm -hmm. it gives us it gives us hope. Yeah, right now. Yeah. So, you know, the, the section you just read um, is almost a blessed hope. Yeah, that oh, wow. that He knows the outcome. So, you know, God will save me. Um, you know, He He hears my voice, and you know, He will redeem me from my battle unharmed. You know, mm -hmm. so there was. At the end of the day, there's not going to be any more pain. That's good. The justice will reign. Okay, so what does he say after that? You can see how it turned his perspective because he's putting his hope, you know, basically in the victory. So now it changes his perspective and enables him to get through today. That's good. That's good. So he says, God will sustain me, and then he will never let... Um, you never let the righteous be shaken. So there is something about like casting burdens and like where if God doesn't rescue you from something, at least he will sustain you through it. And then not only that, he will never let you be shaken. Um, and then not only that, like, like you were saying, 
definitely he will put an end an end to the wicked. Um, that's that's really good. In the New Testament, Peter picks up this 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 song, mm -hmm. uh, and he repeats it almost for, <laughs> like almost the word for word uh, in First, first Peter five seven. Uh, where he says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Like, it, it's one of those things where, um, I don't know, what, what, what are just some of the things that, like, why do you think Peter is going to use that, uh, to use this, this, this verse? What, what do you think is going on in Peter's life? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's probably feeling, you know, like, given the situation, he's probably... Feeling voiceless, feeling powerless, feeling mm -hmm. uh, like he's betrayed on on many levels, and um, so what can you do at the end of the day? Is, you know, cast your burden on the Lord, um, and knowing that He will sustain you, um, knowing at the end of the day the righteous, you know, He's not going to allow them to be shaken. Um, you know, First Peter was written to a. a, a Persecuted church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have a luxury here in America that he didn't have, and yeah. so it may be hard to to um, to imagine Peter's circumstances, but um, to imagine you know not knowing who you can trust, and then yeah. maybe somebody comes in your church and they end up. Betraying you, yeah. So, yeah, it's and it's pretty interesting to see Peter had been the anxious one. Uh, he had been, and I think now as he's giving counsel to the churches, it's it's something he had gone through when yeah. he was with Jesus, where he had, um, where he had, at some point, obviously, when Jesus says he's going to the cross, uh, he had he fight, he basically rebukes Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and then later on, he's gonna end up trying to defend Jesus, and mm -hmm. um, and and you know, eventually we see him not having that anxiety anymore when he's now standing in front of the Sanhedrin, mm -hmm. like in the Pharisees, and really now Peter becomes the rock. <laughs> um, and, and it's pretty interesting to see. This is also what David is is doing here. Um, the fact that like it, it's. It's almost like Peter here is counseling the church to cast their burdens. Mm -hmm. um, you see them exactly like in Acts chapter 4, when they've just been persecuted, beaten. Mm -hmm. They go and they pray, God, look on their threats, do this, do this, and then they continue to <laughs> about their business. And he shows you that like this is how you trust in God. Mm -hmm. You just go and then you give it all to God. And and, and I like the fact that like I think like some of our most important relationships fail us uh, because we because they are also exposing us to the fact that like maybe we are putting way too much weight in those relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a way for God to actually call us to himself as the ultimate trust, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, man, Gus, um, this 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 sum really becomes like a very a great opportunity for for every human being who's ever because like most of us like you know we are always going to be seeking intimacy with other people, and, and to tell you the truth, like like so, how does somebody get like how do you recover there? <laughs> Like after you've been hurt deeply, how do you recover? Um, and how do you trust again? How do you love again? How do you do? Like, is, is there a way you can kind of maybe speak into that? Well, yeah, really, at the end of the day, um, you know, other humans are going to fail us. Yeah, there's at some point they're going to disappoint us, they're going to betray us, they're going to. Um, let us down, and um, that really shows us when they do that how much we had, you know, put our hope in them. And, yeah. Uh, I think 
I think it shows us like how much Christ, how much more we need Christ when at the it's end. good. And without him, without having that security, without having that somebody who's steadfast, um, you know, it, it is hard to to trust somebody again. Yeah. Um, so when when we turn to the one that is steadfast, the one who won't let us down, it does really enable us to, you know, it gives us that security that, that we can then turn to other people again. And because all my hope isn't in you, I can trust you. Because hmm. my all my um, faith isn't in what you're going to do for me, I can rely on you. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, even though you may let me down, Raf, <laughs> Christ won't, so I'm, in, yeah. I'm able to, to. Huh. And companion with Christ, the one that will never let you down, mm -hmm. the one who's steadfast, allows you to have a Christ-like spirit to, to even continue to love those who you know are going to actually wound you deeply. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, a, that's very good. That is very good. And to know that, like, so it enables you to be able to risk, yeah. to love, mm -hmm. and and not be surprised when they do wound you. Yeah. But then also go back to Christ. And then if through crying out to him, there's a way in which he restores us and he sends us back out again to still love and to still, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's really good, man. Um, yeah. Gus, you want to do you mind just praying for us even as we end? Um, yeah, this, this is a good song. Yeah, painfully good. <laughs> uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for for the, your book of Psalms mm -hmm. and the emotion that that not only gives us license to speak to you, but it shows us your heart and how you want us to speak to you to bring our whole selves to to use raw language to be honest with what with you what we want to happen um, and even our weaknesses and how we may want to just leave um, escape uh, be somewhere else that uh, you may have not called us to that that you want to hear our our voice you want to hear our prayers of honesty and that you not only um, look at us with with all-knowing eyes but you look at us with understanding eyes and that you too have have felt these emotions and that there is not a shaming look towards us there is a compassionate look towards us and so that we may even more turn to you with our raw emotion and our, our true honest self towards you. And I'm, this can only have, we only have this ability because of the work that you've done at the cross, that you, that you tore that veil so that we could be fully present with, with you. And we didn't have to prepare ourselves to be with you that you have prepared us. And Lord, I thank you over and over for that. And Lord, I ask you for confidence to use that license to, to come to you with a, to come to an all-knowing, righteous, holy God with a broken self with a in stained clothes and holy shoes that you would look at us with with the light and sing over us that we are there and being honest with you lord thank you for for that and the work that you did to enable that and i just again lord i just ask that you would help us to do that and it's only through you that are we able to it's in your name we pray amen amen well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us, and uh, uh, we pray that you would have an amazing week processing through Psalm 55, and 
Next week, we're looking at Psalm 56, uh, and uh, we pray that you will join us for that as well. So God bless. Have an amazing week. God bless. Thank you.